Hey everybody, Jason from iAnimate here. How's everybody doing in these crazy times? So in this snippet, what we're going to talk about is the evolution of this magic trick shot that I did for my webinars. So every week at iAnimate, I animate live for two hours and show my approach to shots, right? So in this particular shot, what I wanted to do is some nice broad mechanics. Uh, just to kind of figure out like how we can actually make this character interact with a magic hat, right? And then what the result would be is uh, him turning into the, the big hero skyscraper. Um, so in this particular shot, what I wanted to do is plan it out, right? So I, I don't normally just jump into my and start posing the character. I usually use Flipbook to, to plan out these kind of cartoony broad mechanic shots. And it really helps for me to sort of figure things out this way. And, and like for a character like, uh, like Ralphie here, um, I just kind of look at his proportions, right? So like he's got this kind of bigger head, right? And then I'm looking at his body and I'll just sort of simplify it down, right? So it might be just something like this, like where we got like his feet, you know, coming forward like that. And he's got his shorts on. And just try to figure out nice and simply, like there's not a lot of details that we really need, like when we're actually planning a shot, right? So if this was the shot, you know, I might just have like a, an eye like this, you know, and then like a, uh, like this. And then, you know, I may not even do like the, the hairline, but you know, if that was really important to your character, then I just try to do that. So it's really just like a, a sophisticated, stick figure, if you will, right? The stick figure, the way we would normally draw, would just be like one line, right? But I'm really just trying to get like that, but just try to make a little bit of proportion out of it so that I can get um, some uh, design element in there, you know? So if I was trying to do a pose like this, you know, I can do that. And then like, you know, if I'm trying to make a character look up in the air, it might just be like this, right? And, and this way, like you can draw things fairly quickly and just let your shots sort of evolve, right? So like if I'm doing that, and then if I had to do like the character sort of uh, anticipating for a jump or something, you know, I do the same sort of thing, like just trying to find the, the quick shorthand method for drawing, right? So I can allow myself to, to animate sort of a little bit faster or to at least plan out my shots a little bit faster. So, I mean, every shot I will go in with a plan, like, so whether it's live action reference or doing these drawings or whatever, but I never go into a shot without first thinking about what I'm actually gonna do because it, it makes it more fun, right? And, you know, it makes it more fun to actually kind of plan out your shots, you know, collaborate with your director or your, or your lead or your supervisor, um, you know, just so you can kind of get a fresh eye at this quick early stage of a shot, right? So for this, for this particular shot, let's go to my little folder here, the progression, this is it, right? So I basically just planned it out very, very simply, right? So you can see here, this is the character, there's the hat. I have the hat sort of on a separate level, right? And then I just basically put it on there, right? So as soon as he interacts with it, then it's on the same level. Okay, so I have him pick up the hat, look at it upside down, throw it up in the air. I had, originally I had this crazy spin where it almost looked like a, I don't know, <laughs> some sort of a dancer or something, which would have been fun to animate, but I don't think it suited the character. So like with, you know, with fresh eyes, it was probably the right decision, like just to keep it a little bit more simple. So look at the hat, throw it up in the air, and then it lands on his, on his head, right? And he's in like a ta-da pose, you know? So I wanted something very, very clear, very kid-like, you know, like, yay, got a hat on my head, you know? He's a very skillful kid, like making sure that the hat actually lands on his head, but then the hat starts to, to vibrate, then we know it's sort of alive, it's a, it's a magic hat, right? And then he'll turn into skyscraper, right? So. The actual thought here, and I knew like to, if I wasn't to use any sort of scaling or deformers or anything like that, the way to do it would be through motion, right? So like as I'm kind of squashing Ralphie down, he's kind of dragging and then he, and as it turns into skyscraper, he's following through from Ralphie's actions, right? So like as he's coming through this way, we'll, stay, we'll see like the arms sort of drag up like a skyscraper, right? Now for this part right here, um, I shot some live action reference because I really wanted to figure out, you know, what that, that kind of motion would actually be like. 
uh, like in here, I kind of played it a little bit more inside, but as I was kind of acting it out, it was a little bit more fun to actually see, you know, see like a bigger kind of a move, like where we're going from this small character into something a little bit bigger. So bringing the hands on the outside really helped with that. Um, so like the live action reference was a great source, like to, to kind of get me the timing and the follow through of the arms to see like exactly how I can ground this character a little bit more, N not so much to make it realistic, but to make it more believable. Right. So from here, well, I'm going to make a, you know, it was just kind of natural. Like he's now wearing gloves and boots and, and like a big uniform. Right. So I want him to kind of look at his hand, like, you know, then check out his uniform, like, and, like check out the boots that he's wearing, like what the, and then, and then we don't really know what he's gonna do, whether he's gonna be like, you know, scream, cry, you know, run off, like, ah, what would you do? But he actually loves being Skyscraper, he loves being a superhero, but he's still a kid. So I wanted him to do the, this exaggerated kind of uh, uh, superhero pose, you know, at the very end, right? So from here, bringing this in alongside the live action reference into Maya, I was able to kind of go, okay, I'm going to use the, the timing and some of the ideas from the 2D reference uh, with some of the ideas and the, the subtleties and the follow through uh, from the live action reference, you know, that's not recorded in the, in the 2D, right? So from there, let's uh, look at some of our blocking here. So blocking is really for me, just getting the main storytelling poses down, right? So trying to keep it as simple as possible. So it's still in step mode because uh, I really don't want to get distracted by the computers in betweens, right? So what I'm looking for here is just the storytelling poses, right? So here, you know, Ralphie literally picking up the hat, okay? Going to look at the hat and checking the underside of the hat, right? And then going right to our anticipation from here, straight to our anticipation, and then throwing the hat, so a nice extreme pose. And then from here, like that actual throw was pretty energetic, so I wanted him to do like a quick turn there, but not like to land to do like a few more spins. Just going from here, and then landing down into our ta-da pose, right? Then the hat lands. We want to get a little bit of weight, so not to take him out of the to that pose, but just like, you know, just like to take the weight of the hat, you know, just so it's a little bit of a reaction. Okay. And then from there, the hat's going to be starting to shake right here. And then the magic starts to happen. So it's sort of like, you know, we want to get that little bit of a squash down and then continue that action into skyscraper, zoom, right? And then this is where I exploded the arms outwards instead of keeping them inside the silhouette. And I'm always kind of trying to figure out like how can we break up symmetry, even though like it's a very symmetrical pose. Uh, if, if there's a way we can actually make one arm lead the other uh, without destroying the actual spirit of the action, I'll, I'll always try to do that. 